the poem. Dewey was the morning upon the first of May. And Dewey was the admiral that took Manila Bay. Dewey were the Spanish eyes, those orbs of black and blue. But do we really care today? I don't suppose we do. Admiral George Dewey was a Montpelier boy who became a hero during the Spanish-American War. Although George Dewey is forgotten today, uh, in 1899, he was the equivalent of a, of a rock star. I'm standing in front of one of the cannons that uh, Admiral Dewey uh, brought back to Montpelier from the battleship Castilla, which sank in Manila. Well, the story began 150 years ago in a little white cabin directly across the street when a boy by the name of George Dewey began using this lawn as his playground. George, by all accounts, was a high-spirited young lad. Dewey used to play a game with his neighborhood friends where they'd get up on that step, they'd put on a blindfold, and they would run backwards down these stairs. The first one that made it all the way to the bottom uh, won the game. And uh, that was sort of typical of the reckless, uh, natural, charismatic leader that, that he was. He could actually persuade other kids to do that. George Dewey was a uh, local boy, uh, the son of a very prominent family. His father was the founder of National Life Insurance Company which uh, was, uh, became a very big business uh, here in the city of Montpelier. He was sent to uh, Norwich University, which is a nearby military uh, institute here in Vermont, by his father to try to get a little discipline into his, into his life. From Norwich University, he went on to the uh, U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, uh, where he also uh, raised a little hell and uh, got into some, some trouble there as well. But he also evidently found time to study because he finished uh, near the top of his class. I think uh, he was fifth in his class at uh, the U.S. Uh, Naval Academy. At a time when America was beginning to expand and feel itself becoming an international power, the Spanish Empire was in decline and decaying. The pretext for war uh, was increasingly hostile relations between America and Cuba. Uh, an incident occurred where an American battleship in Havana Harbor blew up. It was called the Maine, and that was the uh, causus belli of the Spanish-American War. But this war had been building up for several years before. Remember, America wanted colonies. And uh, more than that, they uh, wanted to practice this policy internationally of American exceptionalism, spreading democracy and freedom to the rest of the world. In um, what became known as the uh, Spanish-American War, uh, in 1898, he steamed into Manila Bay and uh, basically defeated the Spanish fleet in a ma matter of hours without uh, any loss of life on the, on the American side. Uh, now this was quite a feat because Spain was one of the imperial powers. Uh, the United States had not uh, been a major figure on the world stage up until this point. In fact, it was that, uh, that event that really propelled uh, the United States into a leadership role in the world. Dewey was sailing one of the most modern ships that, uh, that, that you could produce in the 1890s. The Spanish ships were built in the 1880s. And these were the types of cannon they had. Uh, they were slow firing. The American cannon were very rapid firing. Uh, the American ships had good motors, were highly maneuverable, were fast. Uh, the Spanish ships, one, one in particular, one of their, one of their big ships, uh, its motor had seized up uh, the, the week before. It had to be towed into battle like a big raft. So there it is. It's got a lot of guns, but it's a big setting duck. So here's Dewey standing on the bridge of the USS Olympia, surveying the Spanish fleet. And uh, rather than try to direct the action, he just turns to the captain of the ship, a man by the name of Gridley. He sort of yawns and says, you may fire when ready, Gridley. And then he turns away. Dewey's big worry was that he was sent on that mission with only about 
the amount of ammunition he was supposed to have. He went into battle short on ammunition. And in the middle of the battle, somebody tells Admiral Dewey that we're almost out of ammunition. Dewey needs to break off the battle, but he doesn't want the Spanish to know why he's breaking off the battle. So he runs up the flags, the semaphores, uh, that says, gentlemen, we're going to take a break for breakfast. The Spanish can't believe it, the Americans can't believe it. But it becomes part of the legend of why Dewey is considered nonchalant and cool in battle. In the middle of the battle, he's going to have his fleet break for breakfast. So they sail off out of, out of gunshot range. They count the ammunition. They find out that the first count was wrong. They actually have enough ammunition to finish the battle. But by the time they turn around to look at the battle, the entire Spanish fleet is either sunk, sinking, or on fire. And it wasn't until uh, 1899 that he arrived back in the United States. Um, and when he got back here, uh, he was treated as a, uh, a, a major hero. He was uh, feted uh, in cities throughout the United States, uh, particularly in uh, New York City, uh, where it was said two million people came to see him. Uh, the city shut down for two days uh, because of all the excitement uh, surrounding Dewey's arrival. It took him until October 12, 1899 to eventually make it back to his hometown, Montpelier, Vermont. It was the last stop on his, uh, on his tour. The city uh, threw him a uh, very large celebration. It was said that 30 to 40,000 people arrived in the city of Montpelier to witness the parade and the festivities. The city was all decked out in, uh, in bunting. The pictures showing uh, the downtown buildings are really pretty fantastic. The state house behind me was decorated with bunting. The, the columns were wrapped with red, white, and blue. Electric lights were uh, strung on the building, so at night the, uh, the building was illuminated. Of course, electric lights were, were new. This is where the reviewing stand would have been set up for, the, uh, for Dewey Day, and he, uh, he alighted from a carriage and uh, took his place on this, uh, this huge wooden structure where he, uh, he viewed the, uh, the parade that, uh, that came by. He eventually uh, uh, got off the stand and rode in a carriage through the streets of Montpelier where he was uh, very warmly welcomed by not just the citizens of Montpelier, obviously, but uh, the people of the state of Vermont. When he finally did decide to visit his old hometown up here in Montpelier, he arranged to have these two big cannons taken off the Spanish battleship Castilla, which sank in only 24 feet of water, placed here on his old playground, pretty much as a monument to his own great self. For a hundred years or more, kids have been treating these cannons like playground equipment. I climbed on these myself as a lad growing up here in Montpelier. After the festivities died down in Montpelier, um, he, was at the, uh, he was at the pinnacle of his uh, popularity and he was considered as a uh, potential candidate for the presidency of the United States. Uh, in uncharacteristic fashion, though, he, uh, he dithered and uh, was not very clear about what his, uh, his intentions uh, were going to be. And eventually he waited so long that the, uh, the political process uh, closed in on him and the doors were closed and he, he did not run for president. Dewey never really uh, rec reclaimed the popularity that he had uh, immediately following his victory at the Battle of Manila Bay. Uh, but he did remain on active duty with the Navy until um, he died in 1917. Uh, he was actually involved in the United States uh, preparation for uh, World War I, serving as chairman of the Joint Army-Navy Board. He was celebrated as a superstar of the first magnitude. He was a man that captured the ethos uh, of, uh, of the day and the age in which he lived. He pretty much defined the uh, beginning of the uh, 20th century. Uh, you had Teddy Roosevelt running around talking about a, a speak softly but carry a big stick, and Dewey uh, epitomized the political feeling of that day as America emerged on the world stage uh, as, as a new uh, power.
and a, a power dedicated to the proposition that it would spread democracy and liberty around the world.